time on One Big Fish. We're going to the great state of Kentucky to the houseboating capital of the world, Lake Cumberland. And you know Lake Cumberland is home to the mighty striped bass. They've also got a pretty big walleye and smallmouth too, but we're going to see if we can't get some of these striped bass to cooperate by courtesy of the world famous guide, Captain Jim Durham with Striper Fun Guide Service. My co-host, Captain Craig Weaver, all the way from Santee, South Carolina, is going to join me, and we're going to see if we can't live bait or use umbrella rigs to talk some of these post-spawn stripers into the boat. Now we'll get Captain Jim to show us how we deploy the planer boards. We're putting another big gizzard shed down. What I'm going to do is put it down 30 feet. There's 10, 20, 30, 30 feet. Now what I'm going to do is to put it on a planer board to get it out away from the buck. This is an offshore brand planer board. And I uh, put it in the clip. Now see this is a release clip. When the fish hits it pops it out. So you put it in the release clip and then you put it on the permanent clip. That way would, would you won't lose it. And the fish hits it'll pop it out of the release. It'll go right down to the weight. And then you just bring the fish in. So again, these planer boards are very aptly named because you can see what's it doing. It's going to plane it right out away from the butt. And this one again set about 30 feet deep. So once we get her out a little bit, you put it in the rod holder. It's a rod holder locked down. Let it slide out just a little bit. And you pop her in gear. And then the speed of the boat will pull it out and it'll plane out away from the boat. And there you have it. One big fish. Now was this the far outside board or? Uh, no, it was the closer board. Closer board, all mm -hmm. right. Aggressive this morning. Don't let it punish you. <laughs> I'm not, buddy, I'm not. Oh, I see him back there, look at him. He's been hitting that other line. I saw that tail. Okay, raise him up nice and steady and slow. Steady, slow, Craig. All right, in the net. Good job. All right, Good Craig. Job. One in the box, ready First to go. First keeper of the trip. That's it. What was his length there, Skipper? 25 inches. 25 inches, 24 to keep him here on Lake Cumberland? That's right, this is a keeper. And this particular fish really abused Craig. You know, really took him to the edge, <laughs> as you can see. And so, uh, but, but a pretty fish, a scrappy fish. Good job. Let's, let's... The bait we're using today is gizzard shad, which are indigenous to Lake Cumberland. I'll show you one here. One of the secrets people ask me all the time is, how are you so successful? The freshest bait is what gets the job done. And you have to go out every morning and throw your net and catch the bait. But here is a, here's a gizzard shed. I'll, I'll leave it and then I'll get it out here for just a minute in my hand. As you can see, they're five to six inches long. And what keeps the bait alive is the super bait tank. And Striper Fun is the national distributor for super bait tanks. These tanks, uh, this is a 30 gallon model, have a stove pipe, a mechanical chamber, the water comes up, it cascades down through certain filters. What happens with these uh, tanks, is, or with this bait rather, is that the, uh, the bait will drown on its feces and on its scales and on the urine. And this filtration system pulls the dead water out of the bottom, it cascades down through the filters and then it blows it back through the top in a counterclockwise motion with an oxygen infuser shooting oxygen into it. Well, I feel the head shake. Feel the head shaking. Hold on just a second. So if you get that down line, I'll get the net. Look how fast this fish is. I think it come out. There we go. He's good. Yeah. Now let's look at these wild contraptions that seem to just catch all the fish over here at Lake Cumberland, the umbrella rigs. All right, guys, this is a Captain Jim special striper dominator umbrella rig. And it catches fish as pretty as it is. What it does is I put four of these out side by side running in the water. You have 36 jigs in the water. It imitates its own school of bait fish. And the fish will absolutely burn this thing up on certain days. 
usually about now, 10, 11 o'clock in the morning when it gets hot, the big predators will get down on the bottom and we're going to run these over top of their heads and see if we can't get some reaction strikes. The secret is to make sure that you deploy it correctly in the water and that it doesn't get caught up. As long as it goes in cleanly, it will run cleanly. So I'm going to put it in now. So as you can see, there's nine jigs running through the water. The jig in the middle is always a little further back than the rest of them. So I'm going to go ahead and put it back about 100 feet. And at 100 feet back, at two and a half mile an hour, it'll run about 30 feet deep. Yeah. Now, Captain Jim, is that typical that when they yes. hit that hard? Yes, they are going to slam it. Wow, unbelievable. He hit that thing like he owed you money, Craig. That's I mean, right. He's gone, you know. You were mentioning a minute ago the uh, you know you don't see a lot of houses and whatever. Yeah. This is a federal waterway. The Corps of Engineers owns the first several hundred yards everywhere. So this lake will never be industrialized. Wow. It's a good thing because you know it seemed like we're the only ones here. You know, no houses, no civilization. You'll see some houses way up on the hill that are inside of the Coors Line. Mm -hmm. the one, or rather, outside of the Coors Line. And once it gets to that, then obviously they're not going to uh, allow you to build. Right. It's government property. It's beautiful. All right, good job, Don. Working nice and steady. Okay. You know, he doesn't you know, like that at all, does no, he? No, no. And, you know, we've just seen these fish on the fish finder, and uh, wham, as soon as we saw it. I think this guy's a little small. Right? A little small, but still on the chartreuse color. He's looking at chartreuse. Something about this color. We'll get him up here. Yeah. Captain Jim, while I'm getting this ready to go back out, went back there and got the measure. 23 and a half, got to be 24, so... Craig still got the early lead, but you know, good guys always finish last. Wait, I got that backwards. How about finish first for a change, you know? We'll be back here in a minute. Now, Cam Jim, what is it that we look for in this giant reservoir in terms of location and structure when we're targeting these stripers? So what we're fishing here at Lake Cumberland, as, you, as you'll see here on the Ray Marine C-120, uh, dual fish finder, GPS, and radar. We have a, uh, the river channels running through here. The old Cumberland River was about 100 feet deep and it was about 100 feet across. And uh, you can see the river channel and it's running right up against this wall. And as I'll, I can zoom out, you can see it runs all the way down here several miles until it crosses across. So as we can, uh, here we go. And as you can see, there's little edges uh, little drop-offs every 10 feet or so, finishing the peripheral edge here of the river channel on these little drop-off humps. And then as we look back at the fish pond... It's too much for you, let, just let us know. Well, I think I can handle it there, old buddy, but thank you very much for the offer. I'll do it. down to about 1.9, I'll help you bring it in. Striper fun guide server. <laughs> Yeehaw! Bait. Uh, on the bottom. A lot of what you see too, these Ray Marine units are so sensitive, you see oxygen coming up off the bottom. So the lake's alive like anything else and it breathes and so you see oxygen bubbles coming off the bottom. So every now and then we come into a nice pod and school of fish and then of course again as you can see these are the little uh, shelves that we're fishing as we come along. So what I'm going to do now is to take the Minn Kota and then control it and we're going to go out we're actually going to fish right on the edge of the river channel. Now there's a nice fish coming in down about 40 feet. You can see his arch right there and then a smaller fish underneath of him. So we've got uh, about eight baits at 40 feet. We have several baits at 30, several baits at 20. 40 foot's been the bite today. Okay. Yep, we got the other one. 
in that motor. Yeah, that's a good one. You get that keeperish look. Don't, yeah. he, don't he skip it? Yeah, there we go. That's a nice fish, yeah. There he is. Here you grab the fish. fish. All right. Set that, and I'll take the net. Grab a good hold of it. Here. Woo! Yeah! You get some link to him. Dude, man, it's one big fit, one big old striper. This thing came in and slammed a uh, big gizzard shed. And you know, when these things come in, I'm gonna tell you what, they can hit about anything they want to hit. You know? It's where's a 500 pound gorilla set, right? Yeah. <laughs> Anywhere you want. But you know the striped bass, the striped bass fishing here, so many different techniques. The goods, the bads, the earlies, the lates, the sun in your eyes, none of those excuses matter. When it comes time to he's feeling like eating, he's going to eat. And that's exactly what this guy did today. And uh, didn't get away, even though he's swimming another line. So excellent deal. And he is definitely one big fish. We'll get him in the box. You know, every season brings a little bit of a tweak in all these techniques and tactics. Camp Jim is now going to explain some of those little subtle differences that might make all the difference in catching that big old striper. We're in the summer season right here at Lake Cumberland, which means the fish are staging here in the mouths of the creeks. This is Fishing Creek, which is on the eastern end of the lake. We had about an hour's run this morning to get to the fish. It's what you have to do. You go where the fish are. Here in the summertime, again, the fish have just finished the spawn. We're in mid-June. The spawn's a little later this year because we had some high water. So mostly the last few weeks we've been catching males, but now the big females are starting to bite. Captain Don got a real nice 20-pound uh, female just a few minutes ago. And as we progress through summer, the fish will then begin to matriculate down towards the dam. They're going to as far as they can go, down in deeper water. Right now we're catching the fish in about 30 feet of water. Here in about a month, the fish will move into about 45 feet of water into August. They'll be down in 60 feet of water through September, 60 to 70. And then as October comes around and the wind and the uh, air begins to cool and the water begins to cool, the days get a little shorter, the fish will be moving back up into the 30 foot range and then by November, December, the fish will be off the main lake and they'll be back in the creeks and we'll be catching the fish way back in the creeks, uh, anywhere from 8 to 12 feet of water. And obviously when we catch fish like that, we don't have a lot of down lines like you see here today where lines right under the boat because the striper is an extremely skittish fish. And that being said, you can't, you know, put a line 10 feet under the boat, he's not gonna hit it. All of these down lines that we see here, like here's a down line right here, down line over here, these are all 30, 35 feet deep. And uh, that's how that works. So what we do during the winter months is we'll have more planer boards that are out. And for uh, you viewers that haven't seen a lot of planer boards, the planer board is very aptly named. What it does is it planes the bait out away from the boat. So as we see the far out planer board out here, that is always your shallowest board because it's furthest from the boat. That board set at 20 feet. The board next to it set about 25 feet. This board here set at 30 feet. And then we have the same thing on the other side. We have three boards aside. And then back in the back, we have slip bobbers, which work as planer boards, the same type of, uh, except they don't plane out, but they have a release. When the fish hits, the release will pop loose. So the slip bobber we have furthest back is set at about 12 feet deep. The next one ends about 20 feet deep. And then, of course, with the down lines that we have out, two in the front and three back here, these are all about 35 feet deep. So we're covering a fairly major swath of uh, water. And then if we start catching fish at a particular depth, once we do that, then we'll put everything at that depth because that's where they're going to be. And uh, that's the story. Lake Cumberland striper fishing. 